Hello, it is I, Dr. Brian Lorgan 111 with another command block invention that's pretty cool for you guys today. What do we have here? We have the Dragon Fractal in Minecraft. You can see it being drawn here in real time on the screen. And what is this thing all about? Well, we're going to learn a bit about it. A number of you may have seen another recent fractal command block invention that I made with the Mandelbrot set, which is another very beautiful picture that can be drawn using command blocks as a fractal pattern. However, that one was pretty complicated to try to explain. This one is still, it makes a very pretty pattern on the screen, but it's a bit simpler, and so I thought I could describe this in a bit more depth, and so that's what we're going to do today. But in order to get started, I think we should talk to Brian out in the real world to talk about folds of paper. So let's do that. So, believe it or not, you can actually create that shape by simply folding a sheet of paper. And so I'm going to show you how you can do that. But then, in order to do it in Minecraft, we're going to have to find the relationship between folding a sheet of paper and binary numbers. And so along the way, you might actually learn something. But let's get started. I have a simple sheet of paper here, a little strip and I am going to fold it in half and make a nice little crease. And when I open it up, we have paper that has one crease in the middle. Not that amazing thus far, but if I fold it back in half again, and then fold it in half the same direction, and then unfold it, this time we've got three creases. One's kind of up and the other two are kind of going down. And if I were to do the same thing again and fold it in half again in the same direction, and unfold it, we get even more creases. This time, if you were to count, you would see that there are seven creases. There's kind of an up, up, down, down, up, down, down. And each time we fold the paper in half, we're effectively kind of doubling the number of creases. You might notice the numbers one, three, seven. If I were to fold it again, I'd get 15 creases. Those are all one less than powers of two. You know the powers of two are two, four, eight, 16. And the number of creases that I get from each of these folds are one less than those numbers, one, three, seven, 15. The other thing that you might notice is if I take the creases and I try to get them all so that they're just going at right angles. So each crease ends up being kind of a right turn or a left turn. You might recognize this shape from what we saw earlier. It may be hard to see on the camera here, and I'm just doing it on my camera phone, but if I try to do a fourth fold and then unfold everything just to see this kind of series of creases, now, assuming I didn't flip the paper, it looks like it's up, up, down, up, up, down, 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 up, up, down, down, up, down, down. The pattern is not obvious, but we're gonna remember that series because that's the series of turns that we need in order to generate this whole crinkly pattern. And we need to find a way to do that with binary numbers. And so in order to do that, now I wanna switch back to Minecraft. So let's go back to the Minecraft world. Wait a minute, did everything just get really blurry all of a sudden? Hold on. Oh, that's right, I was playing around with these crazy super secret settings, which apply different kind of shaders and transformations. Yeah, things look much more clear now. In any case, let's go over here because I want to talk to you guys about binary numbers and I've got some things set up over here. First, I'd like to direct your attention right over here. This is something that looks like something familiar that you might recognize, kind of like the markings that you'd find on a ruler or a yardstick, where this could be an inch marker right here, and then this could be a half inch, and this could be a quarter inch, and this could be an eighth of an inch. And so we'd have one eighth, one quarter, three eighths, a half, five-eighths, three-quarters, seven-eighths, and an inch. Um, and so hopefully that's familiar. It occurs to me that if you're not in the United States, maybe you guys are using the metric system, and maybe your measuring sticks don't look like this, but hopefully you're still following along. In any case, it's the idea of powers of two, kind of dividing things by two here. And we're going to see this pattern again in a moment, uh, but you might already be thinking about the folds of paper and realize that this is kind of like the initial crease that we made. And then when I folded the paper over again, we ended up getting creases here and here. And then when I fold the paper over again, we end up getting these creases here. And so each time we're kind of getting successive series of creases in the paper. Uh, and as a result, this is gonna be related to binary numbers. But let's talk briefly about binary. 
We're usually familiar with working in the decimal number system, or base 10, where we have 10 digits, 0 through 9. And so if you're counting up 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, when you run out of digits, what do you do? You just cycle back around to 0 in the 1's place, but then you add 1 to the place to the left, the 10's place, in order to turn it into 10. And then you go 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. And once again, the 9, you're about to run out of digits, and so you turn it back to a 0, and you change the 1 to a 2 to make it 20. The binary system, unlike base 10, is base 2, which means there's only two digits. There's only 0 and 1, and we use that to represent numbers. And so rather than a 1's place and a 10's place and a 100's place and a 1,000's place, like in decimal, instead in binary, we have a 1's place and a 2's place and a 4's place and an 8's place, where everything doubles as you go one digit to the left. And so I'm representing binary numbers here using white and black wool blocks. A black wool block represents a 1, and a white wool block represents a 0. And so I'm just writing out the numbers here. And so once again, we start with 1. Well, guess what? We've already gotten and used up all the digits. So we have to cycle back around to 0 and now add a 1 to the place, one spot to the left. And so here's how we write 2 as a 1, 0. If I want to add 1 again, well, I can just change this 0 to a 1. But now we've run out of digits after we get to 1, so we have to cycle back around to 0, add 1 to the left. Well, this 1 is already to 1, so it needs to cycle around to a 0 and add 1 to the left. And so 4 becomes 1, 0, 0. can add another number to that. Uh, 5 becomes 1, 0, 1. And in general, you can read off any particular number, like 5 right here, simply by adding up uh, where the 1s appear. And so we've got a 1 in the 4s place and a 1 in the 1s place. And so 4 plus 1 is 5. And so I've just represented all the binary numbers up through 15, through the four folds on the creases of paper, uh, right here using this binary pattern, where black wool is 1s and white wool is zeros. And a number of you might be already familiar with binary numbers, and so this will be old hat. Now that we've talked through the basics of binary numbers, let's look at even and odd numbers. Even numbers are the ones that have a zero in the last digit, and the odd numbers have a one in the last digit, which is pretty straightforward. But if we take a little bit of a deeper look, some numbers have not just a zero in the last digit, but a zero in a number of the final few digits of the number. For example, eight is represented as one zero zero zero. And so if I highlight all of the zeros that appear at the end of a number, you will see a familiar pattern here in pink, where I've replaced the white wool with pink wool whenever it's kind of the final zeros of the number, and we end up getting that ruler pattern that we had over there. And so I just wanted to point this out. Having pointed out this pattern of trailing zeros, let's briefly talk about division. Let's go back to the decimal system. If I have a number like 300 that ends in zero, and you want to divide it by 10, all you have to do is chop off that last zero and turn it into 30. And if I want to divide by 10 again, I could just chop off the last zero, and that would turn it into 3. And so dividing by 10 is really easy in the decimal system. Similarly, dividing by 2 is very easy in the binary system. All we need to do, once again, is to chop off any trailing zeros. And so, for example, the number 2 here, which is represented as 1, 0, if I want to divide it by 2, I can simply chop off that last zero. Or in Minecraft, I can use a piston to kind of push that last zero out to the right. And now I'm left with the number 1. And so I could do a similar type of thing in order to push all of the trailing zeros off, dividing all these numbers by 2, any of the even numbers, until they're no longer even. And rather than push a bunch of pistons to kind of show that, I've already got that prepared over here. So what we have here are the binary numbers, except that each time a number was even, we divided it by 2, sometimes over and over and over again, until it was no longer an even number, until they all became odd. And so as a result, the first thing you notice is that all of the numbers end in 1. They're all odd. That stands out. But what's less obvious is what's going on in the next column over, right over here. I am going to swing around to the opposite side where I have that column highlighted. We have a pattern of ones and zeros, white wool and black wool, but if instead I treat these as up and down and read them, I get up, up, down, up, up, down, down, up, 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 down, down, up, down, down. Where have we seen that pattern before? Indeed, 
the pattern of folds for the dragon fractal is found hidden inside the binary numbers. All you need to do is apply a number of divisions by two to the evens. If I go to the level below where I was drawing the picture, down here is the actual command block computer I was using to draw it. Uh, I can put a redstone block here to reset the pattern to just clear everything out and make it all white wool. And I can put a redstone block down here to actually start the computer going, uh, which is this big row of command blocks as well as some other blocks over here. And there's actually, there's kind of a few different pieces. So for one, we have a wolf friend once again, who is teleporting all around. Uh, and we use him to kind of move around our cursor and then draw stone blocks up inside the wool, up where he is at. And so he is moving around like crazy. He goes super fast. Uh, we also have a couple other friends over here. Uh, we have a pig named X who's used for some scoreboard computations. And we also have a kitty cat, an ocelot, uh, who is over here, who's moving around to decide which way we draw certain blocks. I'm going to go ahead and stop the computation for the moment, turn it back off. But you can see it's already drawn all of that, and just kind of briefly give an overview of what's happening in these different commands. So first up in the reset line, we simply teleport the ocelot and the wolf back to their original positions and set a turn counter back to the number zero. And then we also go and fill a whole bunch of places up in the sky with white wool in order to erase any of the marks that we've already drawn above us. The main loop is this long strip of command blocks right here, and I'm just going to quickly go through them to give a sense of the essence. Basically, we're going to add one to the turn counter at the beginning of the loop. We're going to set a temporary variable equal to zero and then add the turn counter. And so we've got the number in the temporary counter. We're going to set an entity named X, in this case the pig, we're going to set his even score to zero. And then basically we're going to try to figure out if the temporary number was even by doing a few more computations. And if it is, then if the entity named X does have an even score, then we're going to divide that temporary number by two. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to reset the even counter. We're going to do some more computations. And once again, if the pig's score is even once again, then we will divide the temporary score by two. And we just keep doing that over and over and over again. And normally the way you would do this is to write a loop where basically you do it once, and if something is true, you'd have a comparator and go do that loop again and do it again and do it again. Uh, but in Minecraft, using comparators and tests like that uh, can slow things down. And so I've used a computer science technique here called loop unrolling, which is just to put all of the iterations of the loop. I think I've got 10 or 11 copies of that. If it's still even, divide it by two, just over and over and over again uh, in this bit. And then once we finally do, we finally make a decision about the one or zero that was going to be in the twos place of the final number. And we use that to decide whether or not we want to make a left turn or a right turn. And so for that, let's go to this final module over here. So this portion over here is the bit that actually moves the wolf and draws things inside the wool. And so if I take a look at these blocks, execute at the wolf, set block 20 above him to stone, teleport the wolf one, negative one in the Z, put another stone block above the wolf again, teleport the wolf negative one in the Z. And so basically that draws a block, moves them a square, draws another block, moves them a square. And so you can see each time we do one little segment of this thing, we draw a block, move, draw a block, move, and then we're gonna make a turn and draw a block, move, draw a block, move. And so how do the turns work? Well, basically there's a bunch of different rows that are all very similar here. If I take a look at the next row of command blocks, this one draws a stone above the wolf, but then it moves him negative one in the x direction and draws the stone above the wolf and moves him negative one in the x direction. And the next one over, you might be able to guess the pattern, draws the block, positive one in the z, draws the block, positive one in the z, and the next one would be positive one in the x, and then the pattern repeats. And so one of these is effectively going north, one of them's going east, one of them's going south, one of them's going west. And the way that I select which one I'm going to do, each time I need to make a left turn or a right turn, each time our computation gave us a 1 or a 0 for an upfold or a downfold from the paper folds, I'm going to move the cat either one slot to the left or one slot to the right. And as a result, the cat keeps track of whether we should be going north or east or south or west for the next turn.
And so that's it. In order to make it easier to operate, I have a little platform up here with start, stop, and reset buttons. And so if I press reset, all the pattern goes away. It gets replaced by a white wool. I can press start in order to start the thing running. Dragon Fractal by Lorgon111. Hey, that's me. And it starts going, and you can watch the thing unfold. It takes, I don't know, maybe four or five minutes to fill kind of like this whole pattern that we saw at the beginning. If you're just kind of watching it in real time, at least on my computer, it probably run similarly on yours, because the Minecraft computations here actually aren't that bad. If you want to stop it at some point, you can press the stop button. You can always go and press the reset button to erase it. And there's going to be a world download in the description of this video. And so if you'd like to check it out to look at the command blocks a little bit more carefully and understand what's going on, you're welcome to do that. I've also done some experiments myself here with adding color to the picture. It doesn't look amazing, but it looks kind of interesting. And if you read about the Dragon Fractal, there's a number of other things you might discover, such as if you take a look at the kind of like inside white pattern here, you can actually have multiple of these dragon fractals that kind of interlock on the plane. And so maybe you could draw multiple ones of them at the same time in different colors and have them kind of fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. There's a whole lot more you could learn about this and you might be able to draw even prettier pictures than I did if you want to modify this. So be sure to check it out. I really feel that Minecraft, in addition to just being a great game, is really evolving into a platform that one can use for teaching about math and computing and graphs with two-dimensional or three-dimensional visualizations. The possibilities are almost limitless in terms of what you can do with this game. And it presents a rather unique opportunity to kind of teach people in a way that's engaging and fun. And so I would like to do more of this. Uh, I had fun time making this video. At the same time, for a video, this is probably only going to end up being like a 20 minute video or something. It took me a crazy number of hours in order to make it. Um, and so I don't know that I could make them all that frequently, maybe every three or four weeks or something. Um, but I'm going to ask your help and encouragement uh, if you did like this. Um, if you did enjoy this video, uh, I guess there's a few things that you could do to help me out. One is kind of the obvious one. You can always click the like button on YouTube. It just kind of helps promote the video. Uh, but the other one that I think is maybe more valuable is if you know of people who like Minecraft and who might enjoy this video and learn something from it, maybe you could share it with them because the whole point was kind of to do an educational slant. And so I'd like to try to reach an audience wider than what I typically do here on the channel. For the most part, I've just, you know, made video games for fun and entertainment. Um, but recently, I've just been kind of dabbling in this idea of trying to make educational videos kind of scattered in here as well. And so I'd like to do more of that. Um, but then the other thing that I need is just kind of ideas of topics, uh, because I've made a couple of these videos and I have a few ideas kind of floating around in my head, but I'm not sure what else would be good to do in terms of using Minecraft in order to teach about different things. Uh, but I do feel like I'd be capable of doing a number of those. And so if you have great ideas, you can let me know in the comments. You can also send me a private message on YouTube, uh, and I'll definitely you know, read all the different PMs that people send me. Uh, but in any case, I enjoyed making this. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching it. I hope, as always, you guys are having a great day. I'm Dr. Brian Lorgan 111 and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.